destroyed. So if you want to uh, build your own landing light cannon, I've just been choosing this probe core. You're going to need command and control. Um, I like this. I'm going to go ahead and grab the structural fuselage. I'm going to slap the structural fuselage on the front of the thing. Then I'm going to go down to the new area here, the landing, the ground, I guess it's called, the tab there, and get the LT2 landing strut. Hey, the bigger the strut, the more power you get. Let's go ahead and press R to move that into radial symmetry. Put it into 8x radial symmetry. Flip it around like that so they're pointing out. And what I want to do, I want to press 3, click on a landing strut, and make them perfectly flat. That's not perfectly flat. Do you see how that's, that's a little bit angled? You don't want that, so press F. Go relative, or rotation uh, absolute, not rotation relative to the part itself. You want absolute rotation, you press F to switch. You see how that works, right? Make sure you're on absolute, and you tick that down, and that's going to make the landing legs exactly flat. That's important. Um, that is what you want. So the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to grab a little bit of a docking port, my Clampatron Jr. I can just put it on the port right there. Um, come over here, press 2, click on the top landing leg. I'm going to press the C key that turns off angle snap so I have, like, nice fine control over where they are. And I'm going to move these things down so that you just get a little bit of gray. Do you see how there's just a little bit of gray sticking out the side of the docking port? You don't want it, like, way out like that, and you don't want them all the way together like that. You just, the most reliable design is to have just a little bit of gray. How do I know? I've spent literally 100 hours working on these landing leg designs since 1.2 came out. Then you want to move it forward, and here's what you want. You want that little part. You see the front of the piston housing? You want that to be inside the docking port. So you see the docking port right there. You see the piston housing inside the docking port. That's important. You don't want that to be touching the back of this docking port. You want that to be touching the next part in line, the next docking port that we're going to put there. So that is our landing legs, um, or those are our landing legs, I guess, if we want us to use proper English. Right-click, maximize these. The higher the numbers for both damper and spring, the more energy you get. Um, I'll explain this. I'll explain it for you right now. I'll explain it. I want people to be able to do this. It's really fun to do. Um, so I've got the landing legs maximized out. If you need to fine-tune your landing legs, you can actually pull these numbers down. You'll get less energy out of the, uh, ex out of the explosion, out of the shot. Um, you actually get more energy from damper than you get from shrink, spring. So, like... Damper is kind of a coarse tune, and then spring is kind of a fine tune. Don't ask me why the equation works out that way. I just work here. Um, so I'm going to flip this around and put this on the front. Um, if you want to make a really cool projectile, you do need to make a projectile that's aerodynamically stable. This is the projectile we've been using. Um, it's fantastic. We grab this, we turn on angle snap, and we put it on the top. I then come over here, I press 2, I click here and I move it down. Again, I want that rotation to be absolute, so make sure that this says offset. Absolute. Get that, and you can get it right in the middle. You want that little thing to be right in the middle. You see how it's kind of lined up with the middle of the landing leg there? And then I'm going to pull it out. I don't want the tip of that nose cone to be clipping at all. So if I hover over it, I can see that the tip of that nose cone is not touching this docking port. That's super important. If that's touching the docking port that stays behind, it's going to cause a wobble when you take off, and wobble means loss of energy. Um, next thing I do, I'll grab this thing right quick. I'll get this fly-by-wire avionics hub. It makes a very great front of the projectile, um, and that is everything that I need. Now, if I want to make a recoilless cannon design, I can actually uh, hold down Alt, click on this, and make a copy of it. And we can Newton it. We can have an equal and opposite force fired backwards at the same time we fire this forwards. I don't need the projectile or docking port or anything like that on the back, right? All I need is a Xeon container. Xenon container. I always say it wrong. Xenon container. And the mass of this projectile is about the same as the mass of a Xenon contector that has 560 bits of Xenon gas in it. So that right there is a recoilless design because we're going to fire that projectile in this direction with X force. We're going to fire that Xenon tank in this direction with X force. X equals X. So on the whole, this is going to, the probe core in the middle is going to experience no force. Allegedly, or it's going to destroy the runway. You can also make frisbees with this design. You're right, defiant zombies. You can make free. You can, you can definitely make uh, you can make frisbees with the design. Um, but this is a recoilless cannon sort of design. From there on out, you're going to grab these. You can put wheels on it. You can do whatever you want. Um, I also like to put a little inclination. So let's go over here and put it up. Uh, you know, right? This is pointing straight. If you click on it, you hold down shift and press W. You know how you can turn things with W and S and D? Each tick is 5 degrees. So 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40 degrees. Who knew, right? And then finally... The energy output of the cannon is proportional to the mass of the launcher. So if I want to fire this projectile harder, I need to increase the mass of the launcher. I can do that by using an ore tank. 
I'll just grab an ore tank or any other sev heavy part. I do hope this gets finished, fixed before the end of the release. Um, right now, those ore tanks are going on backwards, right? So you come over there, you increase the ore. I'm just gonna, I just wanna increase the mass of the entire vessel. The more massy the vessel, the more power I get out of the cannon. We go ahead and scroll it down. We'll put it on the ground like that. We've got probe core, we've got power because it's coming in through the launch clamps, right? These actually generate electricity. We've got mass, we've got landing light cannons. Last thing that I need to do, let's come over here. Custom one, I'm gonna click on these docking ports. Undock decouple, truly this is a decouple. It's not an undock because I haven't docked these parts together. I've coupled them. When you put together two docking ports in the space plane era VAB, that's a couple, and you get them apart by decoupling them. When you're in the flight scene and you dock two things together, that's a dock. That's th there's a difference between the two to the game. Uh, but I'll tell these things to undock decouple. Here, let's get this undock decouple. I could just do decouple. Down here, I've just got one docking port, so let's grab, 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 grab it. There you go. Undock decouple. Come over here. We should be good to go now, and this is uh, the KSA cannon. It's the landing leg cannon, the leg tillery, if you will. Um, save it. I don't think I've missed anything. Chat, if I've missed anything, I'm gonna blame you. So just go. Just don't, hey, don't try to put wings or anything on it, okay? So here we have this. This is the entire premise behind how we got to orbit so quickly. Um, we have the forward facing cannon, and you can see, right? Did you see when it loaded? The landing legs were up there, but look where the landing legs are pointing now. Now the landing legs are down here, pushing on this. Uh -huh. That's why that works, and we're gonna say three, two, one, fire! There goes the projectile. It's already three, four, five, six, seven. That projectile is getting out of dodge. 10, 12, 13, 14, 15. I don't know how much Delta V, we probably got like 15 or 1600 meters per second of instantaneous acceleration um, out of the projectile. Clearly, I've done this a couple times. We have spent an entire week on this. Um, again, I wanted, to, I wanted to go through this quick explanation for everybody just so that we could cut the VOD. I wanted to get that VOD going because so many people ask how it's supposed to work. Um, what are we up to? Altitude 2.5 on my mark mark. We are still actually at a positive vertical speed. What's our APO going to be? <laughs> our APO is going to be about 50k. Our range is definitely over the horizon. So a realistic World War II uh, artillery warfare. Over the horizon shots. <laughs> over the horizon shots. <laughs> <laughs> you could, yeah, you could do, yeah, you could. It's almost like a skeet shoot throw, a skeet thrower. You're right, dude, Lazric, you're right. That's correct, like, like throwing clay. You're exactly right, man. What are we? We're now 70 kilometers downrange. I think that this shot's gonna go, uh, it's probably gonna go like 200, 250 kilometers. Yeah, we did. We made the Jules Verne moon cannon. We shot the moon. We did. We did, we did, we did. About the same range as the new rail guns. You can change, we actually have the cannon design you can download from Kerbal X um, that allows you to change the inclination of the cannon for different shots. Um, we have a towable artillery design, like there's so many things. Look at that, <laughs> you can see the curvature. <laughs> Anyways, I don't think we need to go all the way through with this. Uh, show the map, yeah, there's the map. We're not even to the apoapsis yet. <laughs> We've done a lot of things like this. We have a magazine design, uh, a five shot auto-loading magazine design for a battleship cannon where it's actually down underneath the gun, and then we use uh, we use the little uh, radar things, the dishes that turn the narrowband scanners to pick projectiles up and load them into the cannon. Um, <laughs> we've done a lot of stuff with this, trust me. We've done a lot of stuff with this. Anyways, that's what I wanted to do. Um, thank you guys for, uh, for watching that. And so many people have asked about the cannon. I figured I would go through the uh, description right quick so that everybody at home can make their own. Um, since 1.2 is coming out next week, this is the build that I got like yesterday for 1.2. I don't foresee this changing for the official release of 1.2. I'll be down in Mexico City streaming from the uh, squad offices with the squad staff uh, for the release of 1.2. Um, but I do hope that this does not get unfixed because currently it's working perfectly fine right now. Um, intended functionality. This is exactly what you want to see. It's hilarious that this is actually increasing its velocity right now. And if you set this as the root node, if you go back and reroute the entire vessel, set this as the root node, your nav wall won't be upside down. It'll, it'll be right side up, um, as long as you've got this in this sort of orientation. But yeah, that's all stock. That's all stock. And uh, that right there is how you build it. You can use it to just return science containers, if that's what you want to do. <laughs> Dancing sheep, no worries. You can make the cannon at home. That's right. You can make the cannon at home. <laughs> I'll be with the squad cast. Actually, Fatzilla, um, there's about 10, 12 people working in the Mexico City offices. Uh, the developers that work there, the only, I think the only one that is not going to be down there is going to be Rover Dude. 
What? No, wait. Rover dude, Sal, um, and the other person um, are not going to be down there. But all the squad, like administrative staff, the community team, they're all going to be down there in Mexico City hanging out. I love this. It's still, it's so aerodynamic. It's increasing its velocity. Look at this. Terminal velocity. Look. Where's it at? 1150. The forward and backward nose cones are super important. This is very important for aerodynamics. You don't just want a flat edge at the back. You don't just want a flat edge at the back. Look at this. I don't know what our range is, but we're about to hit the ocean uh, pretty quickly here. <laughs> Anyways, hope y'all enjoy. Now I can cut that video.